Hello, everybody. This is episode 114 of the Gold Squadron podcast. I'm your host, Dio Morales, and today I'm joined by Marcel. I'm totally not going to be keeping back some secrets, Manzano. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Will, I will always use Watt because Watt's in my heart, Hakewood. Uh, will, Will what? Let let the past die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So today, if you haven't heard, the Summer Points update happened. And today we're going to be breaking it down, giving you guys analysis. No, we're not going to be reading down the papers. I did that already. You can check out our video of me literally just reading it down, initial reactions. But today we're going to be giving analysis for each faction. The goal is to give um, the biggest effects of changes like three of three biggest effects for negative point changes so things where price came down three changes that went up in price that will affect list building the most in that faction and a couple of things that um stay the same that might affect list building and then we're gonna we've actually assigned each faction to each member of the podcast we'll be sharing a couple and adding little bits after each person finishes their segment for uh for each one but should be a good time we're going to be trying to integrate some graphics but of course we'll be reading it down and, and talking about all the things so it should be fun if you guys have any input feel Feel free to join us in the chat. And if you're watching at home in the future, feel free to put your comments in the YouTube comments or send us a message on Facebook, whatever, whatever feels good. Communicate with us. Let us know what you feel or in the hey, Discord. Wait. I got one thing for you first. What do you got for me? Um, should have came right in right now. Where, where, go? where am I looking? Uh, it'll probably come in in a second or so. Okay, well, read well, your names. <laughs> Wait for it. Nope, nothing's happening. Oh. Uh, well, while we're waiting for that, uh, Dion, I, I had to correct a gross error in our last episode. What? We screwed oh. up something? Surprise. All right, go. Yeah. <laughs> now, we don't uh, make many mistakes, but, but what, what, do we, what do we mess up? Uh, it was less we and more you, Dion. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Fine, be the, like the rest of the internet and tell me I'm wrong all the time. I'm done. Uh, it, it has outreached a small niche community. Uh, okay. But uh, James Saharo's U-Wing is from the cartoon show Tailspin. Oh. There's bears in that airplane, sir, not ducks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'll I'll make my formal apology video after this. It's not. Yeah. Oh, it's not Ducktales. Yeah, I said Ducktales. No. Sorry. Nah. There are bears. <laughs> They're not ducks. ducks. All right. <laughs> Cowboys. Oh my. Um. But, hey. Uh, uh. Your 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 stuff is broken. It didn't work. It never came through. I, I just don't... subscribed on on Twitch and 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 I didn't get a little. Uh, Little little ding of redo. Yeah, I didn't get my. <laughs> what your war is call? <laughs> That's this Tuscan Raider yell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I did. <laughs> war is I. <laughs> Let Let's see. Let's see if I can figure that figure that out. People people who are who are listening in their cars right now, they're like, "Come on, guys, can you guys just get to it? We'll get to it. Get I to promise." We're get, we're it's coming. Some suspense here. Keep keep your hands on the wheel. Stop reaching for your phone. Just hold on. It's trying and, to skip 15 seconds ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, 15 second button. Uh, actually, I don't I don't see it on the on the latest recent events. We'll figure it out later. We'll see what happened. I don't know what happened. Anyway. It's time. So what we're going to be doing, again, we're going to be breaking down each faction, and we're going to be starting with everybody's favorite fam. That is the Rebel Alliance. The Rebel Alliance has been assigned to our very own Will Hagwood. Let's, uh, let's get this party started. All right. So uh, I believe our format, as I look at my phone, uh, <laughs> is going to be... Uh, let's start with uh, price drops. Uh, so these are cheaper ships uh, who might see a competitive play. Uh, now, Rebels didn't get 
too many uh, pro price decreases. Um, most of their things are actually increases. Um, so I actually want to call out here a couple of my favorites. Um, and we're going to start with the Rebel Scout. It's a Hawk 290 Initiative 2 generic. Uh, originally priced at 33. Um, I believe they actually went up in points to, th uh, or excuse me, started at 32, went up to 33 in the last points update, along with the Molded Crow title, and now have gone down three points to just 30 uh, for the, uh, the base initiative Hawk. Now, uh, I'm a big fan of Hawks, and I think that they have, they have so many good slots, and now that they're actually cheaper than Y-Wings, as both a turret platform and a bomb carrier. Uh, they also are now, I believe, uh, cheaper than Sheathapedes and rank in as the cheapest crew carrier as well. Um, I recently ran, uh, before the points update, five Rebel Scouts, all with bombs, uh, and various uh, Rebel crew, uh, to surprising effect. And I think that these decreases, uh, all, all actually all of the Hawks went down in price. Uh, most of them uh, one or two points, um, but uh, Kyle and the Scout ended up getting a three point discount there. Now, I'm not sure if Kyle Kurtan can make a splash in the competitive scene. Um, because I think that to utilize his ability, you are going to have to take the expensive Moldy Crow title, which is going to put him at 54 points, which is very expensive. So I don't think I don't think any of the other Hawks are going to see competitive play. Might see a Janors um, or Rourke um, without the Moldy Crow, and I think that's the biggest advantage that this points decrease is showing that you can run these hawks without moldy crow and they'll be points efficient so that's that's the first standout there is the rebel scout uh, now, uh you uh if you know me uh i'm always keeping track of miranda downey's price and she's the next one up here she got two points cheaper and the gap between miranda and the warden just got uh even narrower there uh, used to be a four point, or excuse me, there used to be an eight point difference between them. And now it's just a four point difference between the Warden, Base Initiative 2, and Miranda Donnie. So if you're running only a single K Wing in your list, it's actually still continues to be affordable to run, or excuse me, it's now affordable to run the named pilots instead of uh, running the Warden. Uh, we saw them uh, being spammed. I uh, could, could fit four with Barrage and uh, Proton Bombs, and uh, they basically nerfed that as they was just too efficient. So, and kind of a second run up there. As a uh, Tuketsu? Tuketsu? Isigi Tuketsu! <laughs> yes, that. Uh, might actually come back to um, though at 45 points now, uh, that the K Wing should still probably have like recon specialists and barrage rockets to really be effective. So, still a, a steep investment, but uh, interesting nonetheless. Uh, if we can see a couple more Mirandas coming back, and I think the only other one that I uh think is going to make a real competitive splash uh, might actually be Garvin Dreyas in the ARC-170. Uh, if, uh, if I remember correctly, Garvin had a small splash in the Coruscant Invitational, the most recent one, on a, in a pseudo-alpha strike list. Um, and he is uh, down two points uh, and at just 59 to get that ability. If you're not familiar with Garvin Dress, when he spends his focus token, he can give that focus token to another 
ship, another friendly ship. And that kind of uh, beefy support ship um, with uh, good slots, crew, gunner, and astromech, and talent, uh, I think would be probably my, my last candidate for a potential competitive. Uh, let's see. So moving quickly to uh, price increases that will change the meta. Now, we can't. Uh, go any farther without talking about Braylon Strom, who actually got more expensive from his original cost. Started at 50, went down to 47, now back up to 51. And uh, Braylon's been proved time and time again, because uh, apparently we were all blind originally that his ability was super good. So now he's kind of been conjured out a little bit. He's at 51 points. I don't think that's exactly going to push him out of the meta, but it's going to make you second guess flying him instead of reaching for him uh, as that sub 50 uh, heavy hitter. I think that, uh, let's see, I already mentioned the warden going out uh, or going up in price, locks out the trip or locks out quadruple wardens. And so I think that's, that's a pretty hard hit for that squad and basically quadruple K wings forever. And I think that uh, the other two, uh, turns out, uh, I didn't, personally, I didn't think it was that bad, but uh, the, uh, the combination of Cassie and Andor, Braylon, and Tin Nub, and Wedge Antilles, what's been referred to as the Rebel Beef. Um, the other pieces of that also got bumped up in price. Cassie and Andor's up four. To 51 and wedge is up three to 55 and i think that's uh going to set those just out of reach uh, obviously i don't think you can even what's the quick math on that you can't even fit them all in one list anymore can you nope not even naked so uh i'm sure they we got a lot more factions but uh i'm I'm actually really glad that they upped the price of init all initiative sixes almost across the board because I think it well a lot of them were too cheap including wedge who's now at 55 uh, which is what I think we that's what I, we you would see him with swarm tactics at that same 55 price point and now swarm tactics has gone up significantly as well. Uh, I think it went up to five on initiative sixes. So it's actually a five point total increase for that overall build for Wedge. And I think that's same thing. It doesn't cost amount of pricing. It's still very viable at 55. What it does make is that you have to now second guess him before you bring him. Is he really that important? Um, versus say a Biggs or Garvin Andreas in the next wing. Let's see, so those were the increases. And uh, we have a, next one is a non-change. Oh, let's see. Uh, I'm actually, I might be beating the dead horse horse with this one, but uh, Fen Rao in the Sheathapede. Why is Fen Rao 52 points when AP5 is 32? That is insane to me uh, that <laughs> like 20 <laughs> points to just be higher initiative to get a better pilot ability or a different pilot ability rather. But that's crazy. I mean, Ezra Bridger has a force point and he's 10 points cheaper than friend round two. So that's that's bonkers to me. I don't know why. Like, I mean, what? Uh, let me ask you guys on that uh, as I go into uh, uh, your guys' opinions of the rebels. It was, is is Finn Rao just still getting Ghost Finn hate in second edition? Or why, why is he 52 points? So I think it's probably for two reasons, right? It's the coordinate at initiative six, which essentially is like can or can be supernatural reflexes. And then um, on top of that, the if I'm not mistaken, his ability even prevents force users from using their force, if I'm remembering correctly. I haven't even looked at him for a while. Uh, I believe it says... Does it say tokens? tokens? 
which from okay, so a the tokens into tokens. No, that's uh, a charge. Should be a charge. Okay, right. cool. I'm I'm wrong about that. Then um, yeah, but I think I think it's the initiative fewer, six. Okay, I mean I will agree that fewer and fewer people are using um uh, modifier. Excuse me, tokenless modifying outside of uh like Han and Force users, right? Yeah. So I can see that. What's uh, what's you guys' opinions on uh, the new rebels? I didn't touch on any on any specific upgrade cards. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Leia. You you've got to mention Leia if we're talking oh, about what cool. the main thing. So I I, I put together um, just the av the average rebel beef list. It sits at two twenty. So <laughs> the rebel yeah. beef is now a two hundred and twenty point list, which is uh, probably where where it should have been. Now, I haven't done the uh, maybe you guys can do the the new quad phantoms, um, but yeah, it, that's probably where it needs to be. So that uh, I think that's probably going to be just that that whole archetype is 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 going to be it. Then as well, I think you got. I think the E wings actually have a place. Um, I mean, with their native ability to be able to target a lot from far away and just come in with with basically the ability to shoot yeah. with the target lock focus or have low initiative ships take um take target locks you have um for example r3 and a torpedo uh and protons even though the protons went up i mean you can do so much with them um i, I think the e-wings have, have a really healthy spot right now we're talking about um you know hopefully we never have defenders become Three defenders in a list. I think three E wings that are, that have three regen E wings in a list have have that same type of potential with a higher initiative um, because they're they're at initiative four and you can fit three of them in a list. So I think that 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 can that can make some noise. All right. What about you, Dion? What jumps out at you? Sorry, trying to do fancy things in the background. <laughs> um. I mean, f you guys really covered it all. I was going to mention the E-Wing, but Marcel, he stole my answer, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we got a, a lot of it. I'm going to go yeah, ahead and think, update, yeah. update our, our, um, our graphic here. Are there any other, uh, while, I, while I look at this, any other Rebel-only upgrades that, uh, that you know, ma made a difference? I, I, um, I don't think anything that makes a huge difference. I think the, the biggest difference... You know the the biggest things that got hit are the things that that were making the rebels um, stand out above everything else, which is Leia, the beef, uh, and when and, and when I'm talking about beef, I'm I'm also including the the four Y wings because of veteran turret gunner and the and the turrets got more expensive again, um, and also the um, the regen. I I, I kind of spammed regen and I've been using that really effectively. Uh, that that went up at least uh, for a lot of the ships, so yeah, I think all in all, the, like the rebels were were at the top, consistently at the top. Yes, there's imperialists that 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 stuck up there as well, as mostly because of the quad phantoms or or Vader, but the rebels as a whole got got a slap. All right, yeah, John, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that I've, I'm already seeing some errors in our spreadsheet, but oh, are there? No, There's a couple. Fix them. I don't, I don't know. I can't edit. Oh. Well, call it out. Well, uh, we have no, we just... we have another one, so. <laughs> no, no, it, it's nothing major. It's not like, it's all right, but <laughs> all the newest points are correct. Okay. That's what's important. Uh, yeah, the, uh, so, bef uh, last thing we got to talk about on Rebels, because this is, uh, the old handbrake con is finally done. We can't. Oh. Um, we can't, or we, you can't field a handbrake on anymore because they lost the illicit slot on the YT thirteen hundred. Here's my question to you guys: What are we doing with double mods on the freighter now? Engine and uh, no, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Just making uh, sure, just making you... sure that there's not a clear answer right now. So. No, I mean okay. shield upgrade, hull upgrade. I don't know. Stealth. Did? No. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right. Maybe. I'll take nothing right. for a hundred. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we I think we've finished them all out. By the way, original quad phantoms is also two twenty. So that's that's kind of a running theme there, huh? Yeah, sounds about <laughs> right. I bet I bet uh Locke uh and Locke's Andrea are probably about two twenty as well now. Well, we'll find out here in a second while Dion's doing his. All right. So do you wanna yeah, Dion, you're up. Empire. All right, I guess I, I'm I am I'm up. All right, here we go. I'm the going by the order on your little spreadsheet here. So ah, I wrecked wrecked myself. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, I need an assistant. Here we go. Um, so for <laughs> for the Empire, let's see. They can't see my face right now, so I can just look down. No, we just got points. <laughs> All we see is points. So right now for the Empire, things that went down in cost that will affect the meta or may affect the meta. I think the very first thing that points that, uh, that jumps out to me is the decimator, right? You had all of them go down by four points. Am I right about that guys? I'm not looking at the document. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to update the OBS yeah. right now. Yes. It looks yeah. to be four points across the board. Yeah, four points and across the board. And they all got a crew. Yes. And that there's the additional thing right there. So them getting the crew crew slots, give them some flexibility you can have. I mean, I don't know if anybody would want to do this, but you could do something like take a, uh, a decimator with Palpatine and something else. Uh, you know, it just opens up some more possibilities. Or you can get three Imperial crew on there if you want. But I think overall, the changes to the decimator uh, with the points going down and the slot change there is going to make a big difference. Then the other ship I was looking at here was the TIE V1. So that's, for a lot of us, we call it the TIE Advanced Prototype. This is what they used to call it. Um, but the fact that, you know, all the pilots went down in some way. I question whether or not the Inquisitor will actually see play. But I think with the other ones going down, I, I think I, I think we might actually see it a little bit. The uh, the chassis, you know, has has its issues with basically being extremely fragile, but coming down in cost enough where the force users at least, you start looking at them and thinking, huh, I wonder. I wonder if and if I'm not mistaken, um, a couple of the force upgrades that work really well with them, such as Sense, went down in cost. Yeah. So you can take an Inquisitor with Sense and just be the super annoying blocker. That seems like a uh, like something that could really work well for the Imperials as a new tool. Yeah, and they also instinctive aim went down as well. So, um, and they have they have they have slots for missiles, so they can shoot missiles without target locking. Mm -hmm. And then, not so much ship chassis, but more. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, here we go. The points that went down that I was super surprised to see this um, because people don't really love this card, and that is the fact that Sloan went down by a point. Oh. I was very surprised to see that, um, especially that a lot of the chassis, the, a lot of the generic chassis that it wants to be on, none of them went up in cost. Uh, and in fact, the Decimator can be a pretty good um, Sloan chassis. Uh, I was I was surprised to see that. So that uh, for for points going down, I think those are the ones that I think will make a difference, a splash, if you say. Um, right away. I know one of the you know, kind of honorable mentions might be the fact that the Scimitar Bomber went down in price and be like, oh, it went down, but uh, went down by, by only one point and Barrage Rockets, which is what you usually put on there, went up by one point. So essentially, that's a moot point, right? Nothing, uh, nothing changes there. As for costs going up, I think the most obvious one that all of us were pretty sure uh, was going to happen were the Phantoms, right? The Phantoms got absolutely wrecked by the points. I mean, they they went up anywhere from, I think it was one to three points, if I'm correct, right? Is that, that right? Yep. Uh, three points on Whisper and one for Echo and the Emdar. Sigma was up two. 
So, you know, they didn't punish the chassis as much as people, uh, some people were calling for. They wanted to, like, destroy the chassis. You know, it's unfair. They more went around it by uh, by addressing Juke. But Fe Whisper going up by three points does hurt some of the uh, the bid wars that uh, that Whisper was trying to play. And, of course, you um, it makes it harder as well. The, the other list that I think people were starting to look up, like, oh, if I can't do Quad Phantoms, I'll do three Mdars with Vader. And that that bid that you would have taken normally and, and some of the upgrades you would have done uh, shrinks there because of the one-point increase on the Mdars as well as the increase on Vader, who is my next person on the list. With Vader going up in costs, some of the triple ace lists that people were running, including myself here in the last couple weeks, uh, gets, it, it hurts the bit. Now, you can still run the list. Like The list that I ran this last, was it last weekend, two weekends ago, uh, is still going to uh, be a thing. I think it's still pretty good, but you, you can't. You're not not that you can't. Is that you? In order to bid as aggressively as you could before, you're going to have to rip things off of the list. Which I mean, I have a plan already, which is pretty obvious. You take away. I had like a bomb on Duchess in in the list that I had. You just take that out, and you end up at about the same amount of points. But uh, the fact that Vader went up by a couple points, I think, will hurt. Not hurt, but it, it, it's going to modify some of the list making decisions that people were making. Um. Before I don't think Vader is the obvious choice, even though it's only two points. I don't think is uh, you know you, you don't just reach for Vader like oh of course why why would you not fly Vader? And then last but not least, uh, the other one here that made a splash just recently in the meta would be Major Vinder. Major Vinder is the Alpha class uh, Star Wing, the, the gunboat for lack of a better term. For, I mean I think gunboat is the best term. My personal opinion. <laughs> but uh, Vinder getting the points increase there. Uh, let's just kind of take a peek here at what the point actually is. Rather than going off the top of my head. So goes up by two points. Ends up back at its original cost. Um, do I think that it's going to super affect the uh, his use? Maybe slightly. And that's only because... Usually he was being paired with Vader. Vader goes up by a couple points. Vinder goes up by a couple points. All of a sudden, you're having to make decisions as to what you're leaving behind. Can you actually afford advanced proton torpedoes and proton torpedoes, which, by the way, went up in cost as well? Um, I think the Hatchet Man is probably here to stay. It'll, it'll be around. But I think, like both of you gentlemen already said about some of the other pieces, is that it's no longer like... Oh, duh. Why, why would you not fly that? Why would you not, you know, we want to try to get rid of auto includes, right? Like that's, that's the goal in the game. Quick. Yes, we agree with you. <laughs> 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 Trying to put pause so that I can type a little bit. Uh, missed. <laughs> uh, that was a missed cue. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll um, answer something from earlier. Yep. The quad phantoms is also an exact two twenty. So really, it, it it is a a. There's three lists that are now falling into that. Used to be used to be awesome, and now are exactly three hundred and twenty points. All right, and then as for things that didn't change, that I think will affect or affect list building and or be sad about list building. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with, you know, a lot of the Imperial crew went down in points. A lot of the named crew that we're not seeing out there. But the one guy who's gotten no love, because FFG, I don't know, man. I think they may be just upset at him for blowing up Alderaan. But uh, Tarkin, still still sitting at the same points he was at. And he was, I mean, he went down from 10 to 6, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the last point update, and he's still not taken isn't taken in lists what does he do so we can will do you have that in your memory bank <laughs> yes I, I i know because i've been trying to make uh tarkin list for a long time but so if uh tarkin's got two charges so i uh, spend both so it's like leia but every other round and you could in the system phase give everybody on your team a target lock on the person you have locked 
every other round. Oh, uh, it sounds great in, uh, if your name is Jendon and you have Krennic on board. Otherwise, no, that sounds terrible. Because you have to start the round with that target lock. Mm. So it's very weird. And you, and you need to have it on a bunch of ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. So I and, agree. It should. <laughs> I, I don't know what the point. Uh, at what point uh, Tarkin would be good to. It had to be real cheap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just drop it down as cheap as Leia and just see what happens, right? That's. I mean, like I said, the, and if you're uh, that one build that I just said, whatever I just said, Director Krennic, so Jenin can take his own lock the first round, and then second system phase, he gives the lock to, say, six TIE Fighters. That still is not as good. You can just bring Hellrunner. Yep. <laughs> and stop, uh, stop all the shenanigans. Exactly. Why, why be more complicated? And uh, last but not least, for my points that say the same, and it's not that I'm sad about it, but I'm surprised that it didn't go up, and that is Duchess. Duchess is the TIE striker pilot who can choose to ailerons or not ailerons. And I think with the increase of Whisper and Vader and her sitting at initiative five, I think we might see a little bit more Duchess in the meta. Um, already was decently prevalent in, in ace lists, but the fact that it didn't go up in points, I think is going to, I, I think the stock on Duchess is going up. That's uh, that's my my prediction there. Any additions, gentlemen? I I got one, and uh, it's it's I think kind of a complaint now that I think about it in my head. But it's a it's a dual one. It's about the the tie aggressors and the defenders. Uh, tie aggressors got two points cheap. By the way, that's the ship with the turret for. <laughs> that uh, one. <laughs> the tie, uh, yeah, the tie aggressors. You may have heard of from of it. But anyways, the uh, all of them appear to go down two points and lieutenant kestel who's the uh, the best one went down three but uh the <laughs> big but <laughs> the upgrade that i always thought was gonna be like their ace in the hole veteran turret gunner went up by two points so the veteran turret gunner and turrets went up by a point as well uh, I believe a point or two, no matter what turret you're bringing. So actually, veteran turret gunner and tie aggressors went up in up uh, points. Uh, same thing with the defenders. Uh, all the defenders went down in price uh, by one, except for Vessery and Riot, who went down by two. But Juke goes up by two. So actually, Juke Rexler. Uh, and Juke Onyx increases by a point. Uh, what is going on with these ships? Do they want us to fly them or not? <laughs> they want you to fly it, just not with Juke. Just not with Juke. Yeah, they're I like, mean, eh, no, no Juke. Why am I up? Why am I Initiative 5 Rexler if I'm not bringing Juke? <laughs> Change something. Hmm. Let the past I, I mean, die. Get... Let, let the past die, as you said. I know. You said it. <laughs> 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 All right. That, that, that was my only takeaway is that a lot of uh, they, some of the discounts aren't actually discounts from what they used to be. Right. All right. Let's go ahead and, uh, and move on to scum. Scummy, scummy. <clears throat> All right. Let me bring up my list. There we go. All right. So um, for the scum. So the. Uh, I actually didn't see a whole lot of drops that would that would really make them um, top tier competitive. Uh, to be to be quite frank, I think the I'm, I'm still a big fan of um, of of the of the Falcons. I, I think everybody knows that, and I do think I mean uh, what what is it? Fifty five points for Initiative Six with eleven hull. Uh, yeah, you, you, you'd be crazy to not say that's a, that's that's a really good point cost especially with a with a native ability that gives you basically uh, an ability that went up in cost keeps going up in cost because trick shot is so good that's in the ship itself so that that not changing i think is a positive but um 
So the, so the ships that I got, I'm going to start off with the all-around jump masters, but specifically Dengar. I think that is a the first ship that that's going. It, it's down to 56 points, um, which is eight points less than what it was originally launched at at 2.0. So with the eight point title, which needs to be on it, it, it now is basically as if they would have launched it with a free title off the bat. So uh, the jump master with uh, the Dengar with the title is now at 64 points. I think that's going to be um, really, I, I think that's a really good, good list. And I'm, I'm going here to see. Um, and, and they got a gunner slot, right? That's and they also got a gunner area. slot. I think the gunner slot, um, I think the gunner slot for the rest of the ships are is one of those like meh. Um, I'm not sure how excited I get about the gunner slot, except for again going Dengar because of the initiative. Now you can put hot shot gunner on Dengar. Um, at that point, you want to shoot first. You shoot first. You clear that token and say, "Shoot me back without a token," and then I'm going to shoot you back one more time. I think that that whole. Um, uh, so I think Dengar, Dengar went up. Uh, the way I would build him out is at 84 points with uh, regen, astromech, contraband cybernetics, so he can turn around when he needs to and still take an action. Expert handling for white white uh, barrel rolls and, and hotshot gunner that comes in at 84 points, which if you look at another ship that's uh, probably comparable, which is the uh, Boba Fett. That, how much is Boba Fett now? Crickets, crickets. Somebody, oh, somebody. Knows Boba Fett. <laughs> it's it's eighty five. It it okay, went so, down from eighty six. Okay, so Boba Fett naked. It's an initiative five ship. Boba Fett naked is eighty five points. The Dengar that I listed out with the title regen, contraband cybernetics, expert handling for white barrel rolls and hot shot gunner, and of course he gets to shoot twice and regenerate those shields. Comes in cheaper than a naked Boba Fett um, at initiative six. So I think that's uh, the top of my list as far as the things that changed. Uh, the second one, uh, the second one and the third one, I don't think are actually gonna make any kind of splash uh, is uh, Kerax, just o overall the Kerax uh, having a lower point cost with the illicit title, I mean with the second illicit versus the third modification. I think that gives them a little bit of extra options uh, because really there was no uh, there's there's not enough mods out there to fit three mods on there anyway but um overall i think the Carax is, is a worse version of x-wing or a worse uh, a worse version of a delta 7 um well it's the worst version of anything that's in that archetype <laughs> so, i mean yeah so i mean it, it's cheaper it's still not as cheap as a regular x-wing and oh, well, actually, it is. It's thirty-eight points now, so it's cheaper, but it's I mean, not, it's, as, it's, not as good. It but it's a good the, three dice a t ship. The cartel marauders sitting at forty-one with cybernetics. With contraband cybernetics. Mm-hmm. Thirty-eight plus three, forty-one. That's uh, pretty good. It's it's okay. It's still not as good as um uh, as an X wing. I'll take an X wing with. Um, I'll take an X wing any day. The third one I put was just the shadow cast, the shadow caster cost all around, in combination with the shadow caster title coming down by three points. Uh, I saw the um, the live stream. Well, I didn't see the live stream. I saw the recording of the live stream you did today. You know, and you were saying like everybody, um, not everybody, like Ketsu got some playtime. Nobody flew, uh, Asajj. You know, I'm I'm gonna take a little. Hey, come on. Offensive. You can't. I flew a when, listen, yes, you flew a Saj. You're one person that I've seen be successful with a Saj out of the how many hundreds of games that I've watched? Come on. But, but I am not a nobody. Come on. You're, you're, you're nobody. You're a statistical anomaly. Let okay. us continue. So as, as, I think Asajj was good. I think Asajj is still good. So is Ketsu. Um, so I think those, those point casts will make people bring them i think the result of that is that you're going to get more shadow casters at events like uh, grand nationals at gen con um places like that i don't think they're going to 
get past that that uh, maybe three and three, four and two. Maybe you might get somebody that flies it to a five and one. I don't think, but but um, but yeah. Again, I think I'll, Dengar is really the only one that 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 stands out. As far as the ships that the drops that meant, I think the first one that comes out is Drea. Um, what you is mean the, you mean the in, the increase the increase? Yeah, the increase. Uh, yeah, the points went up and increase was uh, Drea. Drea went up by how many points did Drea go up by? By a million. Seven. Seven points. Rightfully so. I mean that ability, and it actually went up by more than seven. I would say eight because. You, you want to put a turret on there, and the turret went up by, by one as well. So the combination of turret and point cost it went up by eight points. So I, that's going to be, that's going to kill most of, um, a lot of the lists that Dre is there to support. So you're probably going to see a lot less um, generic swarms as a result of it. The other one, where I'm trying to see where I put my list, is uh, the Lok Revenants also went up. Uh, I think all of that is together. And then I also put Veteran Turret Gunner. Uh, they're starting to see a pattern here. So I put, for the three uh, point increases, I put the Drea, Look Revenant, and the Veteran Turret Gunner. Um, all of them are basically part of the same same build, but they're also supporting different things. Um, yeah, and I don't know if you guys could have any other things that any other lists that point increase impacts uh, the actual competitive scene. The surprise, well, the notable surprise or non-change obviously has to be the M3A, the the uh, interceptors. Why? Why? Uh, I don't. Uh, that's it. That, I mean, I'm confused by that reaction. Why aren't they cheaper? Or why aren't, aren't they, they cheaper? cheaper? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, I took that the wrong way. <laughs> I, I really, Will Will came to be offended. <laughs> I was like, I was like, really, DL taking a hard stance on uh, the costume. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually. I'm actually Let's... surprised by a single ship called Seavor, who stayed at 30 points. I think Seavor is fine where it's at. I think, um, the, okay, so l let me give you a comparison. Yes, the M3A can, has the ability to throw additional things on there. It's got that hard point on there. Uh, but when you add things to, because of that hard point, you're going to increase the ship cost, whether it's a heavy laser cannon or whatever it is that you throw on there. In comparison, the ship that most closely, actually not even most closely, a ship that more closely is uh, at the same type as the M3A is the TIE FO, the generic TIE FO. But the generic TIE FO has a better dial. It has a lot of gr a, lot, a lot of blue maneuvers. It can't hard point, but it has the um, the tech slot. And it comes in at 26 points, two points cheaper than the generic M3A. So I, I, I don't get that one. Um, you, I think you said it that they're probably trying to keep it where it is. And then once they release it into hyperspace, you know, when they do the 2.0 release, they'll, they'll make it cheap or something. What about uh, the new Auto Blaster Cannon? Um, we also got a couple. Uh... I think we're getting, uh, what, just the plasma torpedo uh, yeah, that they can take? But True. if you read what the Auto Blaster Cannon does, it's, it's not as good as the old Auto Blaster. I know, but <laughs> still, it's a, it's a cheap three-dice gun for them, though. It, at range one and two, and no, it's a two-dice gun. Auto Blaster two. Uh, in the bullseye, it's three. But yes, I, I <laughs> bullseye range two. Yes, they get an extra dice. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Like I said, that that's the only thing I could think of. I I had the exact same thoughts as you, Marcel. Though, yeah. what what am I? Why am I not flying M three A interceptors? Apparently, In, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all I got. I mean, do you guys got anything else for for the scum? Any other surprises or? I mean, for myself, the um, just I guess a notable thing that I know some people might be excited about is the fact that the IGs went down by a point. Most of them, all of them except for A, I think. 
and then um Actually, no, actually, in the competitive arena, I think the one that we'll actually feel is Gurry going up by two. I think that's one that, that will affect some players because people, people really like that funky barrel roll, especially at initiative five. So I think, I think that's my, uh, my addition there. Uh, I'm, I'm personally excited about the YV666. Uh, it all got a two point discount, which is pretty cool. Uh, cause a lot of, uh, well, I'll, I'll call it out. It's Lats. Lats is trash. Uh, I don't know why that's a sh pilot, but <laughs> why uh, do yeah. you even exist? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Uh, but, but I think Bosco down by two points. Uh, also Kimo Gilas. Uh, they are basically non existent in second edition now. Um, so I like them losing two points, but in the same vein, all the good munitions they want to use keep going up in price. So I'm not quite sure if they're winning that war or not. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take the jump to Wait, I, uh, I just saw Tyler on the chat saying hi, Marcel, and I'm saying hi, Tyler. Uh, get on those shirts. <laughs> Still waiting on them shirts. Still waiting on them shirts, Tyler. All right, res the, resistance. It's called, it's called taking the initiative, Marcel. Uh, I'm the first player to, now. <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah, let's move on to the resistance. Uh, one of the big R's. Um, let's see. So let's start with. I actually wasn't paying attention. If you were, I could look you over here. Are you are you going to infographic this in real time? I I have been. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I was too busy looking at the spreadsheet the first time. Uh, that's fine. That's that's your job. That's fine. That is my job. Uh, let's start with. Uh, <laughs> let's start, well, if you call, if you call, it not getting paid a job. Um, anyways, in love. Uh, that's true. Um, let's start with uh, no the standouts once again. Uh, the MG one hundred Star Fortress goes down in price, uh, but the like I said before the veteran turret gunner that made them very attractive before uh went up in price by two points so they've the veteran turret gunner ones have basically stayed the same but i think that i think with some right crew a little bit of shenanigans uh we could start seeing uh, the star fortresses back again i think finch is really good uh they they recently ruled i don't know uh, I guess it was a couple months ago. Recently ruled the page gunner and veteran turret gunner lets you drop up to four bombs around. Uh, and on Finch, that's crazy. You just surround yourself in bombs. Uh, so <laughs> I am good. a bomb god. <laughs> uh, pretty much. I mean, launch one, shoot your primary, drop a bomb, shoot your secondary or shoot your turret, a third bomb. And then if you die, a fourth bomb. But in the next system phase, you already have two bombs out, so you drop a third one anyway. So you'll have um, it's it's a lot of bombs all around Finch. Like uh, the other ones aren't taking advantage of that. Uh, we have seen uh, Invincible uh, do pretty good as well. So um, he had two point buff. I'm not quite sure if that's. I'm kind of putting those all together as the MG100 Star Fortress. Uh, the next one, though, uh, this one you can call out specifically Ray. Ray went down seven points in the Falcon. Uh, she was also, she was originally pretty affordable at 80 points. Now she's going down by seven. She has a couple good crew uh, that are pretty cheap, um, except for Leia. Um, so I forget which one. I think it's Larma, who is the double clear. She's the new. Uh, double clear stressing person uh, but anyways the uh, that's really good on her uh, and going down seven points we just haven't seen Ray at all so uh, getting her a couple new options there a little bit of different ways to support her a big points decrease should be very interesting to maybe see a resurgence of her uh, just in time for the new movie and let's see, I think the only other notable one, uh, there's not a lot of ships uh, that went down in price, but they're kind of a blanket uh, decrease in price on uh, quote unquote 
the bad T70s. Everybody who's not Poe, Ello, Nine, uh, Snap Wexley, or Lieutenant Bastion went down by a point, which doesn't seem like a lot. Uh, but when we have uh, BB droids at one point for the lowest initiative and uh, being able to combo, that, combo them amongst themselves, bringing multiples, uh, what was it, Seattle? We actually saw Jess Pava and three Red Squadron experts do yeah, very well. Man. Yep, and that, so that one point on your Red Squadron export, expert pays for your heroic so, I mean, basically, anybody of these guys who has a talent slot looks like Joff C Striker, which I believe is the new um, blue blue ace. Uh, also has heroic there. So, basically, getting free heroics on all those guys is pretty cool. Or actually, I think that's Kirkon. I don't know who Joff C, C Striker is. One of them is evade, and one of them boosts one. In. Doesn't really matter, uh, but hopefully, it might. I still think the the sell here though is the blue squadron rookie. Uh, going down and the red squadron rookie going down so you can put heroic on them for 48 points you get a heroic seven health ship not too bad uh but let's go on to increases then i want to see if dion's keeping up with me in real time the bad t70s <laughs> <laughs> uh it's sadly true um <laughs> they deserve it uh anyway so points increases though um we're gonna start with the main one here lulu lamb par uh, that is the best A-Wing and originally was 38 points. I actually want to go back and let me read you off some, uh, uh, I want to compare this. It's now, let me, let me announce it's, it was 38. Uh, Lulu is now 43 that's a five point increase in lulu i actually want to go back and compare them to the current price of a tie striker uh, lulu when he's stressed um, basically can, can boost focus which is kind of like air lorans right and has three attack dice and two agility and four health now the initiative five striker is duchess at 42 points and the other initiative uh, fours are 44. So still in comparison, Lulu still gets a better dial, more options for uh, that boost or not, and has a turret. And he can take heroic in multiple EVT slots. And he's still cheaper than these strikers. I don't understand. Um, but uh, I... At least it's something um, going up to 43. Obviously, Lulu is a great ship. He's, I think, appears in almost every uh, list that if you're like, if you're bringing an A Wing, it's probably Lulu. And let's see. Actually, I'm not quite sure if anything else went up in price. I guess the, uh, the other uh, A Wings did as well. Um, so it's really just A Wings. You can just put. <laughs> John, you just put all other A wings, um, except for uh, this. This is a weird, confusing one for me. I gotta double check. So Zari Bangle didn't go up. And neither did Greer. I think that's the one that surprises me more. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm just trying to wrap my head around. Yeah, and Zari costs the same. Three. Zari is the initiative three, and she costs yeah. the same as the green or the generic. So there's no difference between the generic three and Zari. So the first green is always Zari now. It was yeah, I mean, uh, it was a recommendation before, uh, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, now it, no, now you have to. There's no so I, difference. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. The blue squadron went up by one. The green went up by one. Tally went up by one. I I'm sorry. I'm still on the um, I'm still on the uh, the opinion that these A wings need to go up a lot of points. We haven't been seen as many of them. I'm not quite sure why, because they obviously didn't get worse. We have still seen some success, but I just don't think we've seen just the rampant of four and five A-wing squads like we used to when they first came out. I still don't think 33 points for the cheapest one is enough. And Tally's initiative five at 36, I still don't think that's enough. Up, up, up. 
Um, I think they're fine where they're at. And um, <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I, I, no, I think they're fine. I think um, they made enough tweaks to it to where you're giving off so much concessions if you want to fly them. And Lulo is really the one that um, that that was the that that's the only one that was really making out making it out of the the out of the whole pack that was making it into like the ponian lulo list that was the one that was oh, really no. being used that was the only one that was being used outside of uh, five mean, I'll, things. I'll concede that point that or uh i have a concession i don't know i don't know why i just said or was trying to say but <laughs> yes i think um yes you have a valid point there i will i think i would have seen like to see five points on all of them uh especially because they have new ships coming in who are nice filler ships but I'll sell for just not seeing Lulu as much. Because now you have to actually make a sacrifice. But let's go on. So the last point here is of the same points. No, no, no. Greer, I don't, whatever about Greer. No, actually, <laughs> I want to make a stand here about Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron is 68 points. And probably, I, I think you can say with confidence, the best small ship or the best ship that... The resistance has and i think that all initiative sixes should go up um at least small base initiative sixes the large bases are whatever but i would like to i wish poe had gone up and he didn't now uh, what about you guys any uh notable differences or not notable differences but you know what i mean yeah, I think uh, you you mentioning Poe right there is is the one that I was kind of looking at for sure. Poe, and I guess I, I I'll I'll lump in there uh, Nian Nub as well, just because he's mm-hmm. seen a lot of play lately. But I guess the question is, you know, with that with that squad, is what you brought up earlier is Lulo was really the thing that tied a bunch of these squads together, and without mm-hmm. without being without being with, with being five points more expensive, it just makes it significantly harder to make all the shenanigans you would have before with them. Yeah, Marcel, you got any opinions? No, I, I, I think you guys touched on them all. Um, yeah, there's no... I, I think I'm fine with, with, with all the changes. And uh, even though it hurts, it, it hurts to see the A-Wings get, get, get beat down a little bit outside of Lulo because... Um, they're so fun to fly, but they, 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 in reality, they, they, they were just more efficient than anything else out there that was comparable. Yeah. I think, uh, out of everything of the new releases and waves, I think the biggest question mark is on the resistance right now, uh, because they have two new ships coming in and a lot of new upgrades that are not, uh, what you would call field tested yet. Not quite sure what is going on with those guys and what, uh, but uh, they're they're the uh, the surprise underdogs for me. They're uh, I think we'll be surprised about how good those rebel transports and pods will be in combination with, say, Poe and these other things. Agreed, agreed. All right, uh, first order is next. Um, back, back to me. Uh, so for the first order, the biggest thing that I notice here, um, uh, that I think will make the difference when it comes to points coming down is the fact that the tie SFs, how they said on the stream, not named quick draw came down in price. And the reality is that when it comes to the tie SFs, that's all we saw. Anybody who's trying to play the first order and bring it to SF, you brought quick draw um there was you know you got your your snowflakes your people who tried who tried the other things and maybe had some some minor success here and there but most of it's quick draw right being able to get those multiple attacks um but everybody else going going down in price by a couple points i think just makes them gives them a chance to possibly be more viable and uh just gives you some some list building options there um honestly when it comes to other things that went down in price i'm not you know i guess i'll I'll say it here the generic 
we'll just say the Thai FO in general, that chassis. And I'm looking more at the generics than anything. Uh, oh, I realized I didn't change the, uh, the thing here. The fact that a lot of the generics and lower initiative unique pilots went down in price might give the FOs some type of... I'm not thinking like an FO swarm in the way that we think of a block of TIE fighters going at people. I'm thinking more of some type of list that is good at closing the net around people. So maybe six to seven TIE FOs, maybe a couple of them with abilities that can um, that can, can swarm an opponent, not have to be stuck in some type of uh, block formation of any kind in being able to use their numbers and the fact that they are a little more chunky than a normal TIE fighter to uh, possibly win the day there. And basically getting free fanatical on a couple of them, with those that went down by two points, I think could be uh, could be a difference maker. Uh, next here, um, I know I know I do know that the Thai silencers went down on a couple points. I honestly don't think they're going to make it as big of a splash, which is why I'm not adding them to my list. Uh, the Thai, excuse me, not the Thai, the Upsilon shuttle going up in points. So looking just across the board, the whole chassis just kind of got a bump there. Two points on Starkiller, which is the one you saw a lot, and two points on Tavson hurts some of the um, some of the lists that were out there. Now, uh, Will, you played against Brad with his, you know, Tavson, Starkiller base, and Kylo. How many points was his list at? Was it at two hundred? He actually had. He was rolling. And I think a two-point bid, but he was taking Petty Officer Thanison, though. Okay. Um, so I think if you, uh, I think the most, the most, or excuse me, the normal version was Tavison, Star Killer, Hate Kylo. I think that didn't have a bid. Yeah. You know, it's Pier Two Hundred list. So right there, I mean that that list, you you have to make some decisions there. You either take two Star Killers. Or, you know, Tavson and something else. Uh, but the Upsilon in general just just gets hurt by the by the points going up. It is a really good chassis, and I think Tavson is probably the, the MVP uh, in that realm. I'm surprised that Cardinal went up in cost, especially because his ability can possibly work well with some of those FOs coming down in price. And maybe, I mean, I'm not sure if the FOs came down enough to make Cardinal worth it, but him going up by a point I doesn't really make sense to me. I know that the whole chassis um, in general just went up in points except for Dormants, who already went up 10 points during the emergency uh, points update. But pretty much when it comes to points up, it's just the Upsilon uh, that I think is really going to matter uh, when it comes to ship chassis. As for surprises that things uh, of things that stayed the same, um, I was a little bit surprised that um, that's uh, excuse me that fanatical stayed at two points. Um, people were running it when they had when like when they were trying a lot of the FOs, but uh, really didn't make a, a huge difference for for the Force Order. It's not something that, oh, you know, I'm running these SS because Fanatical's really good. Um, so just a little bit surprised that we didn't see a, uh, a price decrease on there, even though the SF chassis and those FOs did come down in price. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference with just Fanatical going down. Um, I think you might see some of the FOs and SFs actually put put Fanatical aside, uh, and that is even with what I said earlier, talking about you know Fanatical be being a possibility. Is it a possibility? Yes, but I still think it hurts a little bit the fact that it stayed the same. I mean, any any other thoughts on FOs? I think that I don't. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot's going to change for the faction. I'm um, point here and point there, maybe. But the only thing I'm looking at right now is I like how the I like the Zeta Squadron uh, Survivor, the Initiative Two SF. I think that's the best chassis for the whole faction right now, and 
with uh with the new what is uh what is it called passive sensors the mm-hmm. new, uh, sensor slot yeah. i think there's i think there could be some play there with the zetas who with six health reasonably should survive a round of combat um to be able to take a lock afterwards so yeah and especially now with the diamond boron missile that'll Actually, uh, can they take diamond war on missiles? No, no, right? it requires two missiles, I believe. Oh, that would that would that would be good. Um, so they're stuck with concussion missiles, really, as their their main one. There's, that brings them at forty one points. Cool. Mm, not enough to spam a bunch of them, but unfortunately, I, I, but the only thing I really had to say is that uh, Donald Alphonse Tavison, bring Tavison up a couple more points. <laughs> more, more. I'm sick of seeing Tavison in every single first order list. I mean, I think I think the, the first order is the one that's hamstrung the most. It really has the least amount of options, right? Like competitive options. Yeah, I mean, really, just options in general. I mean, they only have four ships. Uh, they have a really limited pool of pilots say, outside of the Typho. Um, even their unique unique crew are limited, even in that. So, I think they're kind of. Um, left uh, left to just figure it out until they get some other ship. Come Maybe on, forever. Luke, I don't know. Luke, come on, Lucasfilm. Where's my my new <laughs> foe, Typho something? It's gonna be an interceptor, wasn't it? Dead. I mean, we saw one in uh, what was it? Star Wars Resistance. We saw like a red interceptor, which looked really awesome. Mm-hmm. But who knows? I don't. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our prequel factions, separatists. What what's what's going on there? All right, I, well, I'll start, I guess. The um, I think the big one is uh, Anakin, Anakin Skywalker plus the Delta Seven. Um, so let's let's go in order. Let's go in order. From the top down? What do you mean in order? No, uh, order of, of losing points to gaining uh, points uh, up. Okay, losing points. Um, so things that went down in points first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get what you're saying. I, I'm struggling to find something that's actually going to make a difference. <laughs> uh, I, None I mean, of you would, matter. Yeah, I would say like the... Um, I mean, you could say if you, if you really don't think anything... You could just go ahead and say it. Yeah, I don't think a whole lot is gonna is, is making a big change. What I do think is that uh, it seems like they're they're trying to downgrade the Delta Seven title, um, and they're because they took down the point cost of all the Delta Seven Aether Sprite or whatever you call them pilots outside of Anakin, and but they raised the Delta Seven title kind of to match that almost almost completely outside of Obi Wan who got a really big. Obi Wan and Plo Koon, who got a really big drop. Um, so I just think that they, they want people to fly them without the title. Also, when you look at what they did with the um, calibrated laser targeting, plus the other one that uh, I forgot what it is, but it's the one that that if you're in the bullseye, you spend a force token to basically make the ship roll whatever hits and crits were rolled. So even if you're shooting something through a rock, that would be five. If you only roll one, they're only going to roll one. I think you're referencing uh, predictive shot. Yeah, predictive shot. So I think um, they're they're trying to get people to fly these ships more in that vein uh, versus just loading them up with with um, with regen and Delta 7 and just kind of doing what mostly everyone who was flying this faction was doing which is um a couple regen regen uh, jedi and what the rest is filler or in some cases a bid <laughs> or a couple regen jedi in, in a in a crazy bid yeah oh crap or that <laughs> No, I just realized something. Keep, keep keep rolling, keep rolling. All right, well, all right. Um, I'll, I got a couple of standouts. I mean, uh, I, I do want to. I, I I just had to mention the torrent. Uh, I, is another thing that I don't think it's enough. 
Uh, now I, I'm going to agree with you, Marcel. I don't think it's enough to bring him back in competition. I think Max Brook was saying something about how they, right before they released the uh, Torrents, they just slashed the price of the Gold Squadron because no one was flying them. But, but now in actual play, that's the only ship being flown because it's 25 points. It's very, it's very, very affordable. And they, what really bothers me is it's still so it's it's dedicated, right? We uh, that's like there was supposed to be their faction card, their faction talent dedicated, but correct me if I'm wrong, that only can go on two ships, right? There's only two ships that can actually take dedicated. Am I crazy about this? Hmm. What does that dedicated do again? Let me rededicated. Uh, while. Uh, another friendly ship in your side arcs uh, defense. Uh, if it is limited or has the dedicated upgrade and you are not strained, you may get a strained token. And if you do, the defender re-rolls one of their results. Uh, so it might not even do anything for all that effort you put into it. But problem is that you're looking for it. Um, Blue Squadron Protectors, which is 29 points still to get that ability. You still have to spend four extra points to get the ability. And uh, I believe on the arcs, let me double check here, do the exact amount. So in the arcs, you're spending five points uh, to strain them and give the reroll, which is not very good. I don't understand... Like, honestly, Dedicated should be free. <laughs> like, that's, that's how bad that card is. Like, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking when they designed that, but it's pretty bad. They were... Otherwise, I, I love the changes to calibrated laser targeting. Um, that's exactly where um, I was, what I was hoping for. 50% discount across the board on it. So, start bringing it. Sega C and Delta B regions. <laughs> Alrighty, so sorry, I got put behind here because the computer started doing weird things. Uh, it's okay. Well, do you, uh, <laughs> oh, dang it, square wing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I, need, I need a minute. I'm sorry. No, well, skip all this. Start work. What do you have? Uh, do you have separatists ready to go? Because uh, no, we've... so what, what happened is that my font for uh for the x-wing ships was not updated with the wave uh whatever this the the, the separatist and and i got i basically got to restart my program not 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 our recording program don't freak out people just we'll be fine it's gonna be fine uh, i just need a minute okay. I, need, I need a minute all right i don't know uh let me ask you let me ask you a question here marcel sure. about all right, so uh, we can talk about Royal Naboo Starfighters now. We have their points. Give. Uh, I want to point out. Uh, I'm going to say point as many times as possible here. Point, point, that point. <laughs> point. Uh, uh, Padme, interestingly enough, is the most expensive Naboo Starfighter at 45 I points. I don't think it's interesting at all. I mean, it. We. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I mean uh, maybe Anakin. No, I mean no, no, Anakin is 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 kind of eh. uh, Padme. I mean her ability is 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 very solid. I mean it's 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 a super solid list. So no, that's um, what I was trying to say in my stuttering was that when we reviewed the cards, we we're like, who cares about the, all the other ones? Let's fly Padme. Yeah, I mean um, Rick is still good because it's Initiative Five and getting mm -hmm. extra dice. Uh, both offensively and defensively is good, right? You're not nobody's going to complain yeah. for a free evade plus an extra dice. Um, so it's 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 42 points. I think Rick is going to be a steal. It's probably going to be the one that gets flown the most. Anakin with the force and 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 the uh, and the double barrel roll is is good. Um, I think the initiative is going to hurt Anakin a lot. But um, so here's my question for you. Uh, Rick Olay 
<laughs> Olé. Olé. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, uh, it's going to be uh, 49 points with Juke now. Uh, is that a good buy or a bad buy? 49. Uh, For who? Guys. Uh, Rick Olé. With uh, Juke? With Juke. Seven point Juke on him. 49 points. Mm -hmm. Good buy or bad buy? Or should um, we be looking at other upgrades, like a missile or something? A cheap uh, torpedo. Because that's uh, what they can take. They can't take missiles. Yeah. They can't. Uh, like plasma torpedoes? Well, like a nine-point plasma torpedo. Uh, that, that's my question for you guys. Juke for seven or plasma for nine or both? I, th I mean, I think the efficiency move there, you go for the juke because you can... It doesn't cost you any. It doesn't cost you an action, besides you know the, yep. uh, you know your three, four, or five maneuver to actually get the uh, get the juke activated, and then you you can focus for defense or for offense there. I, mean, I think I think juke's the call there if that's the question. Well, on on initiative five, sure. Are you still bringing juke on, say Padme now? I think I'm Padme. You're bringing anything that keeps Padme alive longer because she basically you're just pointing her at something that everybody else is shooting at. Um, so, so we're talking like elusive or something. I have whatever keeps her alive longer. So I would put definitely like regen, um, you know, R2. And did we mention that uh, regen uh, got more expensive for three agility ships? Uh, which doesn't not... include anything but E wings and Jedi, Jedi, right? There's no other. Mm -hmm. There's no other increase on that, right? So they're just singling out basically you, Marcel, as you can't put <laughs> regen on E wings anymore. Stop it! Uh, well, I can because they <laughs> yeah. they lowered their cost by good. two. So they oh, really, yeah, they lowered the cost by two. So I can they right. the they were they went from fifty six to fifty four. So uh, regen uh, initiative for E-Wing is still 60 points, so I'm golden. All right. Uh, Dion, are you caught back up now? Do you have an opinion on these Jedis? Uh, I mean, the, I think the biggest one, the fact that Obi-Wan went down so many points and the fact that he has three Force available is going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest impact on... Um, on the the Republic because you can still run a double Jedi list if you really want to maybe maybe you sacrifice Anakin you say you know what uh, you know let's let's maybe just get rid of that uh, configuration on Anakin maybe just no config at all but you can still get you know a supernatural Obi Wan in your list which is really good yeah I, I I'm actually I'm surprised not more people are flying the. Um... The, the the brilliant not the brilliant the predictive shot one because if you put predictive shot let's say um anakin what? or have you, have you tried that card it's bad shot, man. yeah it's not that bad come on it's because, bad. I, because I don't basically like they, i don't like it that you had to spin the force before you even roll or if you blank because out. it doesn't matter even if well you're taking a focus and a you've got a focus there oh, that's true i don't well that's fair but um yeah, like like Obi Wan. Let's say Obi Wan as an example. Like Obi Wan with predictive shot, uh, shield upgrade, and regen. It's only one. You have an extra agility than you you had before. Uh, it's at sixty two points, and you really only one shield difference than what you started with to begin with. So that ship is never gonna die, uh, even without predictive shot. But um, so Obi Wan is never gonna die. So if you want to do that whole uh, run around. Um, sneak a couple points in and never die you, you can still do that that's that nothing's stopping you from doing that and i think you even have a better shot of doing that with uh three agility and two shields than with two agility and three shields well there was somebody i'm trying to remember it, it was, was in, um yeah i played him it, um in, yeah in uh, bloomington in bloomington who was doing that and yeah, he was five and oh uh when i played him yeah and all the ships that he used went down in points yeah, I mean he and he was already at like one seventy something or one. Yeah, he I mean, was he at had, a receipt some ridiculous bid. Yeah, and he he had won all his games without losing the ship. Um, <laughs> so I mean, you can still do that uh, as long as you don't run into a wedge and Luke with torpedoes and two hundred O's. You 
<laughs> well, it doesn't sound like God. that's going to happen anytime soon. No, no. They, 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 yeah, they, they put everything up. So, but but anyway, um, I, I think you can still do the whole the whole region and run. Uh, you just it's going to take you. You just going to take you a little bit longer to get those first points before you start running. All right. I mean, I think so. Are we saying that the only things that are really going to impact the meta of Republic list building is Plo and and Obi Wan going down in points and the Delta Seven going up? Oh. Because the V nineteen pretty much doesn't matter still. I mean, I wish it did, but <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we all have wishes. But I mean, I, right? The V nineteen isn't going to do anything, even with those points coming down. No, you're still not going to see Oddball out there trying to shoot missiles in a torrent. It's not going to happen. All right. I mean, I mean, I mean, you might, but we, might. we have a we have a jaded view of competitive play these days. But I mean, True. when we say competitive play, it's we're looking at like top cut major events and stuff like that. Can he win games? I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. But no, he's not winning tournaments though. All righty. Well, let's go ahead and shift over to the separatists. All right. So the separatists, actually, the separatists, I think, out of all the factions, probably got, in my opinion, uh, it's got it got the most love, but it also got a, a pretty big slap in the face as well. <laughs> uh, and I like the love yeah. more than you know. I, I can handle the the slap in the face because it's something that I didn't fly that often versus um, the love that it got. And the first thing that I'm going to put on my list is definitely uh, the grappling struts. So the grappling struts coming down to one point. Uh, I think when when the articles were first first released and the the whole ability to be able to land on a rock and then just keep turning around everybody from the bat was excited about that that new that that new ability but when the, when the points came out and you saw that it was four points then um yeah you saw that it was four points and then you saw like they're better off as as just kind of a i wouldn't even call them an alpha strike but they're, they're better off as as just a, a, a swarm with with a missile, nobody put them on. So that's gonna be my yeah. top. Yeah, yeah that would be my. It would cost you one more uh, instead of putting struts. It cost you one more point to just get energy shells. So it didn't it didn't make s spamming struts worth anything. Um, and yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna echo that completely. Uh, the let me see if uh, I think it's just the Trade Federation drone. As my top pick, uh, well, in conjunction with the struts, so it basically gets struts for free now. All right, Mister Humphrey well, no, Bogart. No, 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 that's not true. Uh, the drone, the drone's the same price because of uh, yeah, because it went down. Yeah, yeah, the energy shell went up. Yeah, so, so the, guess, uh, yeah, they did that on purpose. Basically, they they. Uh, all right, I'm gonna change my answer too. Sorry, precise hunters. <laughs> specifically might actually see play now uh, before you actually had to spend uh, the difference between an initiative three, uh, which was 22 and a precise hunter, which basically has predator is 26. So you're paying four points for predator. Uh, and they corrected that. Now uh, it's 21 for the separatist drone and 23 for precise hunter. So it's the correct amount to pay for predator on your vulture. Boom. Ooh. All right. I think I think that's the best. So, uh, well, honorable uh, mention to Grievous. Uh, dude, whose name is on the list for CIS? We should have swapped that around. What? Well, you were, oh, so you get both? List. You give both Republic and Separatist? I didn't do Republic. I, I got um. I thought you said we we're all doing Republic. We I got. I set them out of order. It's CIS. all it's all my fault. I'm sorry, my friends. That's okay, brothers. Yeah. He, I, he dropped the ball, Dion. I did. The ball. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, but, uh, but actually, I I'm not um well, I'm not disagreeing on. with you. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. Or anything I put in uh, grappling struts as number one. Number two, I put grievous with Solus one. Uh, they both got 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 a drop, and I think both um, that ship's probably going to get some play. Vulture 
droids, I think, uh, I know you said the Initiative 3 guys, which the, the precise ones, but I, I think the, actually the Vulture droid with the grappling strut together is, is going to make the biggest impact because you can get them at 25 points now uh, with the grappling strut. So you can either spam eight of them or you can do uh, six with uh, one of the uh, tactical relays and your um, your bells above of choice. So, so yeah, that that's going to be... Uh, I'm actually gonna. I'm. I'm strongly considering taking it to the league final tomorrow, um, because we have a sp special type of rule set, and we might be using the the updated points for it. So maybe, maybe not. But um, gotta tune in for that. The uh, so what do you got uh, since you wanted to pitch in and uh, steal this thunder? What do you got for your negatives? Well, uh, I think well, we can. I think we can easily assess that it's. Uh, hate Maul and Dooku. And one. I, I, so that's two. You got Hate. You got Ma well, I, I put Hate as one. I put okay. Dooku and Maul as second. And then for third, I actually put Energy Shells. Um, because although the Energy Shells... <laughs> you guys are uh, going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... All right, don't talk list about them. Hate, talk one. about Hate first. Why? Why is Hate bad now? <laughs> I can imagine the own like <laughs> running, around, <laughs> running around the house like it's on fire. Um, so hate the they made it. Uh, what do you call it? Um, variable price. Variable price based on the size of the base, where it's three, six, and nine now. Three for small base, six for medium base, and nine for large base. Is there any medium base? Force user, there actually oh. isn't one. Okay, so but you can, in nine. theory, put mall. Oh no, that doesn't work. No, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah, you can't. You can't. They won't give it a four slot. So um, yeah, it's basically three and nine. Um, yeah, and I think uh, I think that's a pretty straightforward one. So let's see. D. Um, yep, you're going precise hunter, grappling struts, grievous with solace. Hate, Count Dooku, and Darth Maul. What are the other ones? As I see you going through your through your icons. <laughs> now for the for the surprises, as far as what the, the the question was, a notable surprise that received no change. I actually had none. I, I think everything that needed to get changed got changed. Um, and I don't think anybody, I, I can't think of anyone that, that'll be upset with anything that went up or anything that went down. Um, I think the CIS becomes one of the stronger factions with, with grappling struts because grappling struts serve two purposes. They serve the purpose of, you know, staying on a rock and, and doing the shenanigans, but it also serves the purpose of basically collision detector lets you ignore, ignore those uh, rocks and still be able to take your actions. And that's indefinite on top of that. But the biggest surprise to me out of everything is actually something that's yet to be released. It's TA-175 point cost. I think that to me, that, that was the biggest surprise when this came out. Will, uh, you want to talk about like what the TA does? TA-175. Uh, if a ship with numeric calculations would be destroyed, uh, each ship uh, receives a calculate token. I'm paraphrasing that. Uh, see how see how close I got. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's basically when a ship dies. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not with network calculations. It's with calculate on its action bar, which includes a ship that has tactical oh, relay. So, so we're talking about like a tr uh, triple, uh, not triple zero. Uh, o sixty six is a droid. The the lowest Boba Labs, whatever they're called, uh, they are. Oh, the Auto Freethian Otroard. That's not yeah, but also the TA gives you the calculate action, so that yeah, just well, like Kraken. So so what what's the wor what's the wording on the on TA again? On the action I'll, bar. I'll, I'll read. But yeah, no, just read. Just read. Bar. I wanna because I will read. I'll read it for you. Yeah. After a friendly ship. At range 0 to 3, 
with calculate on its action bar is destroyed. Each friendly ship at range zero to three with calculate on its action bar gains one calculate token. That's each friendly ship at range zero to three. So now I assume that's range zero to three of TA. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So there's 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 two things I want to point out with the wording on that card. So the only time it works for itself is during simultaneous fire. Because you are considered destroyed when your de- number of damage cards is equal or greater to the, your whole number on your card. Now, if your initiative destroyed, it doesn't work. And also, if you are... Um, what do you mean it doesn't work if your initiative it does, is destroyed? Because you're destroyed, removed off the... like. It's de- So a ship is destroyed... And then remove off the board, and then that is when TA triggers. But TA isn't on the board anymore. Uh, TA, uh, by the way, does not give you the calculate action like Kraken does. Okay, so irrelevant. The, okay, the, irrelevant. The only so. time it would trigger on itself is if a droid was carrying it. And I believe the only droid, uh, the only two droids capable of carrying it are the Belblab autopilot. And the hyena bomber, that's really expensive. DBS thirty two C. It's the coordinating hyena bomber. Okay, but still, uh, going back to why it's a surprise, it it comes in at five points. And again, assuming um, you you're gonna fly this relatively well and and hide the carrier, um, it's five points cheaper than Kraken, and it's still gives a pretty um it, it makes difficult choices for for the opponent because you know you, you want to kill something but the, the more stuff you kill the more stuff that shows up and um like the more calculate tokens show up and then i think it has better late game effect than kraken where kraken lets you hold that that a little bit longer but later in the game um these things just pop like popcorn so It'll it, it it it's more likely that you start bumping, you start doing things where you're not going to have that calculate token, and or you're doing things where you want to use multiple calculate tokens. For example, um, sharing one to the side, or if you have seer and you want to use it as a crack shot, you know it, it gives you a lot more versatility. And I think five points for it is is pretty cheap. I think um, I think you're gonna see a lot of it. All right, well, so we've gone through all of the point changes in each of the factions. Yes, there's plenty to digest with the Wave 4 content, but because we really haven't gotten it on the table, we haven't had enough time to build lists, I don't want to dive into that prematurely, mostly because we don't have enough experience, and I think we'd kind of be talking out of our butt a little bit. I will say we can, we can do a little bit of butt talking. What is one point cost out of everything that was released that's new, that's not a point change, that you're like, that either makes sense or I'm confused by it? Can I, I'll go first. Um, I am not surprised and I'm very glad that Leia is as, the resistance Leia is as expensive as she is. Um, for those of you who don't know, they, they basically said, yeah, she's like the most expensive crew in the game right now is she yeah she is not not a most expensive gunner but most expensive crew crew is. and she's at 19 points 19 points for resistance leia i i think that uh is a good starting place for her i still think people will try it but yeah i mean, I, mean you know, it's called, the it's called um, white talon roll with your poe i think it's pretty cool yeah, yeah not only white talon with your poe you got um put it on um uh, you know, put it with Ray. Ray went down seven, so it's it, it. I think it has a spot. Yeah, and I know that like, <laughs> I, I, there's enough people out there saying like, oh, but it's it's so expensive, it's pricey, but people are still gonna try it. And I feel it, you know what, Luke was pricey, and Luke was making it on list towards you know towards recently, uh, at major events. Yep. Agreed. 
Anything else out there that just kind of went like, huh? Interesting. Uh, I guess we, we mentioned we mentioned already Padme, TA. right? Oh, and Pat, TA. Yeah, Padme and TA. Um, being one, two, one. the other one was uh, the Republic, the Separatist, and the Resistance were the, the other ones, right? The pods. They got the Resistance mm-hmm. pods and transports. Um, yeah, I think no surprise there. They they came in pretty pretty normal. I don't think they're going to be over over overly used. All right. So the last thing I want to just kind of quickly hit here, uh, no infographic for this one because it would be just way too hard to do it. Um, and that is talking about the generic upgrades. So uh, generic upgrades saw some pretty aggressive uh, changes. Uh, um, I think we already hit on a couple of these in passing, but we talked about R2 Astromech uh, changing to a variable points. And that's set on agility now, right? You guys said? Which one? Uh, R2 Astromech? Yep. The regen one? Mm-hmm. So price 3346. So basically the initiative, I mean, uh, Agility 3 are the only ones got to increase. Mm-hmm. Tactical officer uh, going up by four points, sitting at six now. Are we surprised that uh, that, that happened? Changing your coordinate from red to white costs you six points now. Do you think, like, I almost think it's a little bit of an overreaction from the rebels, like their power efficiency being shifted into like tactical officer is the problem. I don't think tactical officer was the problem. It was just another tool they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I think, I mean, it's strong. The only ones that were really taking it were the U-wings and um, the, the escape crafts uh, on scum. I, I don't really remember seeing tactical officer anywhere else other than those two ships but i think because of how much they were seeing play on on the u-wings that's probably why they did it Mm -hmm. we also mentioned earlier veteran turret gunner going up to eight points increasing by a total of two um and i think i mean what and i guess the other just big notable one would be Juke going up by seven points, which of course hurts the Thai Phantom, but as well as anybody else who wants to take Juke. I mean, I think those are probably the most notable things out there for generic upgrades. Is there anything anything we're missing you want to add there? Mm. Silence. All right. That sounds no. like a big no. All right, guys. Well, um, today, you know, we talked about a lot of things. If you guys want me to publish those infographics we did, remember, it's not – the infographics are not everything that's changed. It's everything we think that will matter that changed. So uh, if you'd like us to publish it, let me know. I can make a picture link in the description or something like that. Um, that was a lot of fun to make uh, as we were doing. A little bit difficult, but uh, definitely fun. And those of you who are just listening, if you want to take a peek at them, we can, uh, again, have that in there for you. Um, I know a couple people have been asking, like, Dion, where have been my X-Wing, my X-Wing weekend events? Where, why haven't you been streaming? So I took a little bit of a break. Okay, We have an event coming up in July. That's going to be our next one. And the reason I've been taking a break on weekend events is because of the august x-wing august i am literally going to be streaming every single weekend in august we will be on four yes you heard me four different continents in the month of august i will be flying in the united states to the west coast i will also be in indiana okay so I think, right, so, so we start with Gen Con, we go from Gen Con to, let me pull up, where's, where's my calendar here? Gen Con is the first weekend, followed by uh, something that's not in my personal calendar. That's a problem. What's happening Ar- on the 10th? There's something happening on the Argentina? 10th. Argentina? Ah, yes, yes, the, um, the Buenos Aires Open. 
followed by a hyperspace trial in California. Isofan, yes, I'm coming, by the way. <laughs> I got to gotta hit, hit you up about that. Uh, then the weekend of the 24th. Actually, that, that content even starts on Thursday because of some of the stuff happening there. Uh, is Euros going to be in Poland. And then the weekend after that is and Australia. It's a full week. It's like four or five days, isn't it? Because it starts Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. You're going to be so, working. Gonna be a busy man, so that's why we, we're kind of taking it slow right now. I'm spending time with my family, doing family stuff. We're actually taking a vacation uh, this following week. We'll be hanging out with uh, with some other X-wing friends. We got some surprises planned there, but uh, super excited about that. And thank you to everybody who has supported the channel, and uh, thank you for your patience. I know July is a little bit light. We basically have one event, kind of one event. I want to call it one and a half. Uh, in in there, but pretty much after that, after August, we'll continue our schedule of two to three events a month that we'll be at. So thank you to everybody who's done that. Reminder to hit that Twitch Prime button every 30 days, and you can watch all of our YouTube content at youtube.com slash Gold Squadron Podcast. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell if you actually want to see when we release content, we have a bunch of stuff. We got games. We got different videos where I'm giving my opinion on stuff. We got more stuff planned as well. Um, I mean, we all, all kinds of stuff. So thank you to everybody who has supported us. Uh, and lastly, but most importantly, if you want to get awesome swag, which by the way, patrons, uh, we started the shipping process last Friday. Uh, I, I would say more the gathering process because it's taking two days, two full days of with people helping me to get all this stuff together. We'll start shipping this Friday the uh, commander and squad leader level and then continue down from there. But So that stuff's on the way. Super excited to get that in your hands. Um, and we got announcements for the next wave of swag uh, coming soon. TM. So thank you to everybody who's done that. If you want to, go to patreon.com slash gold squadron. For everybody here at Gold Squadron, my name's Dio Morales. Thanks for watching, listening, feeling, and loving. Gold Squadron out.